Hey guys, what's going on in the kitchen? My name is Fam Sal, and welcome back to one of these talks. I kind of do talks every now and again about stuff that I think matters to me in life, or or getting to the root of what I think is important in life. And today's video is about a very scary encounter that I had a couple of days ago that's thankfully over now. And uh, I wanted to use that to talk about something else. Let's just get started. The chance of life is small. Astronomically small. We live in a solar system of nine planets. Yes, Pluto is a planet, fight me. And that's out of 500 solar systems in the Milky Way. Out of two trillion galaxies in the universe. Out of 10 to the power of 10 to the power of 16 discovered universes. I don't really know if there's life in those other universes, but that part doesn't really matter because, in fact, we can go in the opposite direction. There is 8 billion people in the world as of now, and for that to happen, two people out of that 8 billion had to meet each other out of hundreds of interactions between your mother and your father had in your life. And for those people to exist, uh, two people out of seven billion people had to meet each other. And for those people to exist, two people out of six billion people had to meet each other. And so on, and so on, and so on, and so on. And when you are conceived into this world, you have to be one of the first sperm to enter into the womb. That's 40 million to 1.2 billion. And that's 40 million to 1.2 billion for your father, and your mother, 40 million to 1.2 billion for your grandmothers and your grandfathers, 40 million to 1.2 billion for your great grandmothers and your great grandfathers, and so on and so on and so on until the beginning of humanity itself. And since humans have been around for 6 million years, the number that represents the chance in which you are here is somewhat around this number. This number. 72 trillion. To put that into perspective, these are chances to win different assorted lotteries. And none of this even takes into account the chance that this Earth even exists in the first place. And the reason I say this is because a couple of days ago I had a pretty scary experience. So there I was, laying restless in bed around 6 in the morning. When I got really really hungry. So I got up and decided to make myself some meatloaf. I checked the fridge, opened the ground beef, and slapped it in a bowl, and it smelled horrible. But since there wasn't really much that I could do, I threw it in the compost and I moved on. Since that was the only thing I was willing to cook that night, I ended up checking the freezer and I saw chicken tikka masala. Uh, that was my favorite thing to eat when it came to Indian food. Uh, I opened the box and to my dismay, the package was messed up. The plastic seal wasn't on the containers and there was mold all over my chicken. So like the ground beef, I chucked it in the compost and moved on. I was disappointed, but then I remembered that I ordered two packages of chicken tikka masala. But I checked and I saw that the rice was a different color than it normally was, which is a yellowish rice. So I slapped it in the microwave without thinking twice and started scarfing it down. I shoved the chicken in my mouth and I cannot stress how awful this felt. Genuinely, the only way that I think I can possibly describe it in that moment was if I shoved a spoonful of fire ants in my mouth that just bit the inside of my mouth and throat and tongue, and it also felt like I had a large splinter stabbing into my throat. Genuinely, I think the worst pain I felt in a long time. And at first I thought it was my imagination, so I shoved a few more bites in my mouth and bared the pain, but then the pain legitimately became unbearable. I checked online and... I typed in the search bar, why does my entire mouth severely hurt after eating chicken? Because I thought at the time it was something that they did to the chicken. I mean, something wrong with me and the chicken. So I checked the internet and Google said that it could be an allergic reaction, which 
is very strange because this is nothing like any of the other allergic reactions that I've ever had in my life. Uh, for context, I need to explain that I have a very severe peanut allergy and this extends to other nuts like cashews and even certain peas. It's kind of weird, but let's get on back to the video. So I got up from the couch and I checked the ingredients list on the food box and there it was, clean as day. Cashews. I'm freaking out because I'm more allergic to cashews than I am peanuts, which is ridiculous. And I had just previously spent three or four minutes just sitting there and shoveling food in my face trying to ignore the pain. Which means at this point I have around one to two minutes before I pass out due to lack of oxygen and then eventually die from an anaphylactic shock. I rush to the cabinet and I yank all of the medicines down onto the floor and I spot my EpiPen. For more context, an EpiPen is something that you have to jam into your legs to stop an in-progress allergic reaction. But at this point, I had no idea if it was past its expiration date, and if it was past its expiration date, then it would do me no good. So I diverted my attention to Benadryl. Even more context, Benadryl is a secondary cure for an allergic reaction. I don't, I don't find the Benadryl, so I keep checking around the house, eventually tearing apart my entire room, as well as the cabinets in my house. And eventually, after ripping the whole house to shreds, I finally found my wall drill, and off-brand Walgreens Benadryl. I don't understand why they don't just call it Benadryl. Calling it wall drill made my life so much more difficult because I had no idea if it was a different kind of medication that was just followed by the word drill. Because medications sometimes have similar names. And I speed dial my mother to see how much I need to take because I may or may not have forgotten the amount that I need because I haven't had an allergic reaction in so, so long. By the time I took the medication, I think I had around 40 or so seconds before shit started getting really bad. I call 911 to see if I need to be hospitalized after the situation, and the operator tells me that I need to keep the door unlocked. And my door doesn't unlock from the outside, which means that I need to put my dogs in a separate room and sit there in front of the entrance to my home in the freezing cold. I am hating my life right now. That's when I see it. The mountains. They look so unbelievably stunning. And I think to myself, my life a minute ago was hinging on about one minute to 30 seconds. I could have wasted my chance. One out of this many. To live a short experience that we call life. Right now, knowing that could have been the end of my story, it makes me a lot happier to be alive right now. Well, before I was ready to be happy that I was alive, I then had to be monitored for 24 hours to make sure that I don't go back into an allergic reaction because that can happen with people with, uh, that have allergies. And so I visited my absolute angel of a grandmother. But then, suddenly, my body decided, screw hanging out with your grandma, it's sleepy time. And I slept for an entire 22 hours. Luckily I'm okay, and I get to tell you this wonderful story, but I also get to talk about what a small chance that we've been given to do something in this world. Whether you believe in any kind of religion, whether you believe in any kind of science, the fact is that you're alive, and that you being alive 
is a rare thing. And I don't ever want to waste that. 